Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ross Furman. I'm one of the assistant principals at the college. I'm just going to wait a minute or two just to allow a few more people to join us. Okay, I think that looks like a very healthy number, so I'm going to make a start. So as I say, I'm Ross Furman, and um, this evening there are going to be a few contributors from Worthing and Haywards Heath. This is a joint event, and we're hopefully going to give you a really helpful overview of, of how to go about preparing for exams and revision. Um, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end, so do please use the Q&A feature to ask any questions you'd like answered, and we'll answer a few as we go along, and we'll come back to that at the end. So the purpose of this evening is to really support you as you approach mock exams, which are coming up in the next few weeks, and then also really building towards your, your final external exams, which are later in the year. We haven't run this event before, but we're, we're obviously aware that students are in a, a, a different situation this year, that they haven't had the same experience of exams and revision this year that they've had in the past. Um, we've also discovered the convenience of webinars, and we hope that um, that you're all able to enjoy this very conveniently from the comfort of your, your sofas back home. So as we think about exams, we know that there are some uncertainties about exams still in the summer. Uh, we know that the position in England is different to the position which has been taken by Wales and Scotland, but the government in England, in England is still very clear that exams will be going ahead. They have been postponed by about three weeks, so they're a little bit later than they normally are, but they are we do still expect them to happen. And so we, we really do have to proceed on the basis that external exams will be happening this year. Um, having said that, it's, it's probably worth making the point without causing too much anxiety, but it's worth making the point that these mocks are important also because if there was to be a change and um, the government did decide that external exams in June weren't gonna happen in the normal way, then, then mocks might also play a part in, in final grades as well. So they do need to be taken seriously. Okay, let's move on to the aims of the session. So our goals are to try and build confidence um, in how you go about structuring your, your revision. You've got sort of six, seven months between now and, and the end of your courses. So how are you gonna use that time? How are you gonna revise actively so that you're really learning the material? What should we do about the kind of the stresses and strains associated with exams? And then what resources are there out there which, which might be of help? That's what we're gonna try and cover. We're going to start, though, with our next slide, with a little quiz. We thought that we would just um, start by assessing what your starting point is in terms of your own approach to revision and um, how effective your strategies are at the moment. So in order to do this little quiz, there are seven questions. You need a pen and paper. That's all you're going to need. And all you need to do is write down your score for each of the seven questions. Then I'm going to ask you to add them up at the end. OK, so question number one. I plan to revise, but then I find it difficult to settle down to begin. Are you one, two, three, four, or five? Okay, have a little think about that. And then we'll press on to the next one, please. Question two. For an important exam, I usually start revising the night before, the week before, et cetera, et cetera. How long? Do you structure your revision over? Question three, I make revision notes or flashcards to help me memorize a topic. Is that something you do quite often or have you not ever tried that before? Revision notes are a big feature of um, revision at college level and we're gonna be coming back to that later on. Question four, a, a significant one. I like to have my phone when I revise that I can chat to friends at the same time. Challenging one for lots of us. How do you score on that one? Okay, we'll move on to the next question. I memorize topics so that I am able to recall them without looking at my notes. So. Are you conscious that you really do manage to memorize 
your stuff? Do you get to the point when you can put your notes away and you're still able to recall the stuff that you've been learning? I revise a topic, this is question six. I revise a topic at least three times before the exam spread out over several weeks. So do you go back to a topic and reinforce it and then go back a bit later to reinforce it again? And then last question, I practice using past exam questions so I know what to expect. We know that's important. Are you good at finding those exam questions and then practicing, practicing in the final days and weeks before the exam. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to kind of score yourself on all those questions. Let's have a look at a little scoring um, scheme. So how did you do? So where do you fit? If you could just add up those numbers and decide what your total is, do you fit into the red category, the amber or the green? Um, Obviously, our goal is that by the time you reach your exams, you will be all firmly in that green category and you'll all be doing th th those things which we know are most effective to help you succeed in your studies. OK, I'm just going to finish by saying a couple of things about myths associated with exams. And then I'm going to pass it on. So the next screen, please. A little bit of myth busting. Here are a few classic myths which um, students sometimes still believe. Um, even at college level, which we would like to challenge this evening, really. So, for example, rereading and highlighting my notes and textbooks works for me. We know that, that just rereading, just highlighting is too passive. Your brain is not active, active enough and it's not, you're not learning enough. And so we need to find more effective methods than that. Revision can be easy. Well, I'm afraid to say that re revision you know, shouldn't really be easy. It is one of the hardest, maybe the hardest academic task you face so far, and, um, and so it takes hard, intensive work. Um, students sometimes think that there are tricks to make it easy. My students talk about spending days and days creating a beautiful revision calendar, or sometimes they say, well, I, I record all my notes onto a tape and then I play it as I'm falling asleep at night, and, and that, I find that quite easy. And I think the truth is that, that revision is never gonna be that easy because it is hard, intensive brain work, but it can be, enjoyable, weirdly, and there is, there is a genuine pleasure in getting really confident with your, your stuff as you get closer to the exam. Uh, having the TV on helps? Well, I'm afraid that just can't be true. And there's plenty of research which shows that having distractions in the re room can de detract from your learning. Even, and this is a bit controversial, even music in the background has been shown in some research to kind of be a distraction. Although I know for some students, it feels essential. Um, working under pressure is best for me, so last minute revision is best. Well, a big message of this evening is that it's, um, it's really important to start early and repeat. Start early and repeat. Last minute doesn't work when you're having to learn as much as we are for A-levels and, and other exams. And then finally, the one in green, which is kind of an important one, I've spent hours revising, it's bound to help. Well, yeah, that's great. Hours are a big part of, of successful revision, but it's also about how you revise and choosing the most effective strategies. So do please think about that as we go through the rest of the evening. I'm going to hand over now to Colin Ilsley, who's Head of Learning at Worthing and who's going to talk to you about structuring your revision. Colin. Thank you, Ross, and uh, good evening, ev everyone. Um, revision isn't uh, an activity that happens just before an exam. It has to be an ongoing uh, process and time needs to be committed to it. So therefore you do need to start early and revisit your revision on a regular basis. So whether you're a year 12 or a year 13 student, starting early means starting now. Uh, and it means going right the way through to June when you will have your final uh, assessments. So as you can see from the forgetting curve that's on the left, something that you uh, remember or revise now will be lost in uh, uh, a year uh, unless you uh, keep revisiting it. Uh, even after a day, uh, up to 40% of what you uh, uh, remember can, can be lost. So uh, given that many of you are studying uh, two year A-levels or some of you might be doing applied generals where you're studying an exam unit over six months, 
uh, it's imperative that your revision is planned and revisited so that the information is retained. So uh, the graph on the right, the revision curve is the approach that you need to take so that you're consolidating your learning and developing your ability to uh, tackle the exams. So revising on a regular basis will enable, enable you to uh, remember more, apply more and answer more. Um, but revision isn't, about, isn't just about uh, uh, you, okay? We are here to help and staff have created resources and tasks to enable you to revise right the way through the year. So next slide, please. And this, and this is how. Yeah, the ISPs for, for A-levels uh, are structured so that you've got six to seven hours of tar targeted work. Um, the, the research clearly identifies key focuses that together are the most successful strategies for preparing for exams and you'll see them in your ISPs. So uh, your ISP uh, has got uh, five different sections to it uh, and you need to focus on all of them. If you're not spending that amount of time, the six to seven hours, you need to consider whether or not uh, you're looking at them in the depth that needs to be uh, uh, looked at. So your ISPs will have a recap. So that might be reviewing your class notes so that you're consolidating what you've just learned. You uh, will be asked to secure your knowledge. So that might be using, uh, uh, creating your revision resources. Uh, straight away so that you've got them for use uh, as you move through the course. There'll be elements where you'll be do retrieval practice. So that will be uh, things like exam questions on the work that you've just uh, uh, studied. Uh, and at the same time, there'll be elements where you need to prepare for the next lesson. So that might be reading ahead, making notes in preparation for the next lesson, uh, watching videos. And uh, very importantly, is the interleaving section of your ISPs, where you'll revisit work from previous units and previous years. So staff will direct you to those so that you continually go back to sections that you've looked at before. So there's a clear rationale and purpose behind your uh, uh, ISPs. Uh, it is your homework. Uh, and that's obviously uh, why as staff, uh, we are so focused on your uh, the weekly completion of these uh, uh, um, of this uh, homework. Um, so if you're doing your ISP fully and comprehensively, you should feel confident about the progress that uh, uh, you're ma making and you should be building up to the December assessments. And as Ross said earlier, these assessments in December are really important because they may contribute uh, towards your fi final grade. So next slide, please. OK, so whilst the ISPs will, so, uh, will support you on an ongoing basis, you also need to prepare effectively for uh, the key assessment points. So one of those is December. So for year 12 uh, students, year 13 students, you've got exams coming up uh, in December. Year 13 will also have uh, April uh, mock exams. And then obviously in June, you've got your uh, full A-level e exams. For year 12, in May and June, you'll have internal uh, exams, uh, which will cover all of the, uh, the year. So it's important that uh, within your planning, you are looking at these key assessment points. But you'll also have uh, an additional at least eight other assessments during the year. And these assessments develop and assess your subject specific skills. So you're gonna gradually get prepared by staff for the next assessment and ultimately your final exam. So everything that we plan and assess is supporting you to, to challenge your exams. Um, but alongside this is the need for you to continue with your ongoing revision so that you maximize your potential. Next slide, please. Okay, so to uh, be able to complete the ISPs and create time for uh, revision ahead of the key assessments and on a continual basis, you must organize your time effectively. So this is a typical timetable for a three A-level uh, student. 
Um, we have seven teaching blocks each week at college and students will be required in for three, uh, one for each of their uh, subjects. Um, so you'll see that in this case, the, the student is in blocks C, G and F, which means they're in college Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So we would encourage students to print something like this off so you can start to organize uh, your revision. You know, planning your time is a, is a good exercise to do because this highlights the amount of time available for students to be doing uh, revision uh, and ISP work. So um, for this student, uh, they've got time in the evenings uh, and you'll see that on the slide, it says until 10 o'clock. It's really important that students recognize the need to get uh, adequate sleep. So revising and finishing work at two o'clock in the morning, knowing that they've got to be up for a, uh, um, be in college 8.30 is not good practice. So it's important that we uh, consider finishing at a, uh, an appropriate time. Um, but this student would also have time uh, before classes, in between classes, uh, they've got a day off on Friday, the weekend. So all of this can be used for ISP work and revision. And it's just a matter of planning time effectively so that uh, students can prioritize and organize their, uh, all their time. Um, this, is, this is something that I said that you could print, print off and uh, somewhat have a paper version, but there are apps out there that will support this type of thing. Uh, students can put reminders in their phones, can build their di diaries up electronically. But the key message is that around your commitments at college, um, you need to make sure that uh, uh, you plan your time effectively. Now, there is time for other things too. Uh, we understand that things like socialising, sport, part-time jobs uh, will take up some of this time. So it is about fitting those in as well and striking the balance. Uh, but we also need to understand that that is a balance. So we only recommend students doing a maximum of 12 hours a week paid work, uh, because beyond that, it starts to uh, get in the way of uh, uh, academic work. So it's uh, really important that students understand that planning their time uh, is part of, the, part of the process. It supports revision. Revision doesn't happen without planning. So the, the message is get yourself prepared to revise regularly and for the long term, it needs to be a habit. Uh, complete your ISPs uh, fully, plan your time effectively. And if you do that, you'll have every chance of success. So now I'm gonna pass you over to uh, uh, Chris Mumry, who is the Head of Learning at Haywards Heath. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Colin. Um, good evening, everyone. In this part of the webinar, I'm going to be talking to you about some active revision strategies. Um, so first of all, it's just vital to think about how you can be actively engaged with the material you're revising um, and applying relevant knowledge and skills in terms of how you're going to be assessed. So as we've kind of already established, passive revision where you're just going back through your notes is not really going to have much of an impact in terms of succeeding in an exam or an important assessment. What you've got to do as part of your revision is think about having a clear purpose to what you're doing. So what you're trying to achieve, what is the outcome uh, in terms of the activity you're taking and the approach you're taking at that time. Obviously a good approach is to make use of any pre-existing assessment materials that are available to you. So that will include past papers. It may also include practice papers that your uh, questions that your teachers have set. You may even be able to develop your own practice papers and practice questions once you know what the format of the paper is. And the important aspect of that is building your confidence and getting yourself ready for those assessments. And simulating the conditions of how you're going to be assessed is really just as important as the knowledge and skills you're going to be assessed on. So the more you can do that, the more you'll feel confident going into those exams. And it's a really, really good idea to answer plenty of practice questions as part of an active revision strategy. Another thing to think about is periods of focus revision with regular breaks. And that's much more effective than long periods of time spending just going through notes. Okay, so spend sort of 40 to 50 minutes on focus revision, give yourself a short, short sort of 10, 15 minute break before you go back to what you're working on. You're gonna find that sort of focus revision is much, much more effective in terms of preparing you for those exams. 
And also a really important one is to avoid any distractions. Make sure your phone is off, you find a quiet area. It's really important you'll clearly focus on the task at hand. Any distractions will only dilute the impact of the time you set aside for revising. So going back to Colin's idea about the timetable, it's really important you make good use of that time. Um, so now I'm going to look at some examples of active revision strategies. Next slide, please. Okay, so interleaving rather than blocking. This is something that Colin mentioned earlier. Try and mix things up. So by blocking, we mean spending long periods of time on one topic or subject. The idea of interleaving or mixing up your revision is going to be much, much more effective in terms of succeeding in those assessments. And if you think about how we learn, it's rarely through the repetition of the same task. So for example, if you're learning to drive, which some of you may be doing at the moment or thinking about doing, you wouldn't spend a series of lessons on steering then a series of lessons on gear changing, then a series of lessons on braking. The most effective way of learning to drive is to mix things up and practice a range of skills during your lessons. And the same thing applies to revision. So mixing up in terms of topic, in terms of subject, is again, keep you focused and make the best use of that time. Uh, next slide, please. Using graphic organizers, whether it be mind maps, Venn diagrams, tables, Developing ways of organizing your notes visually will not only help you collate important information and develop skills, but the process itself will also ensure you're actively engaged with what it is you're revising. So again, going back to the idea of it being active, of having some kind of outcome, think of what it is you're trying to create. And this is a way in which you can create a useful resource which you can go back to before you actually complete those assessments and do those exams. Uh, next slide, please. So on this slide, I want to talk to you a little bit about Cornell note-taking. This is a very good method that will help you manage your revision when it comes to remembering important facts. So you can basically draw out the table, as you can see here on the screen. Um, at the top, put the topic and the date. And then in the main uh, body, the main table here, it says notes about topic. That's where you'll basically put down your notes as you're, as you're watching a video or doing some reading or participating in a lesson. Try and skip a line between points. So you might want to add information later. And again, going back to the resources is obviously going to help you in terms of establishing that knowledge. Um, you can use abbreviations to save time. And the left-hand box is for key words from those notes. So trying to establish the key points from those notes, just condensing that information is going to be a far more effective uh, uh, tool in terms of revision rather than just going back through the original notes. So pulling out those notes as main points in the left-hand column could be key points, terminology, or important people and dates that relate to uh, what it is you're studying. And then the bottom section where it says summary, this is where you um, basically summarize what you've learned. And a good way of thinking about this section is how you would explain that topic to someone who doesn't understand it. So bringing all those points together in terms of a short summary uh, it's going to be a really, really effective tool for you to use just to establish what it is that you're taking out, from, taking out of that activity. And as a follow up, you can then use those notes, the keywords and the summary and apply them when answering past paper questions. OK, I'm not going to pass you over to Emma Prince, uh, also head of learning at Worthing College, who's going to talk about how to manage exam stress. Over to you, Emma. Thanks, Chris. Good evening, everyone. Um, you've heard some strategies for organisation and active revision, but my focus is helping you to manage all of those things without getting overwhelmed. I've taken some of these ideas from the Young Minds website, so it's worth having a look because they've got a wealth of supportive resources on there. It's really important to strike a healthy balance and the ongoing revision in ISPs helps you to do that as it is avoid, avoids any last minute cramming and overload. Obviously, you're going to step up a level in the run up to exams, but it's vital to your well-being that revision is not all consuming. Keep up your hobbies, the things you do for fun and do take some time to chill out as well. But also make sure you're eating and sleeping properly, because if your body's not being fueled properly, then it's not going to work and you're not going to be able to revise. It's really important to have a plan and stick to it, but make sure within that plan, you allow for some downtime where you can really switch off and give your brain a rest. Knowing you're on schedule will mean that you can take time out without being worried about whether you've done enough. Next slide, please. Colin talked a lot in his section about uh, organization and there are lots of ways you can help 
your organization. And there's a really important reason for doing this. If you think about all of the vision you need to do for all of your subjects, it can feel as if you've got a mountain to climb and that you're stuck at the bottom with no way up. But those organization strategies give you the equipment to break down that mountain into manageable chunks so that it reduces anxiety and makes revision feel achievable. Next slide, please. So when you're in a period of revision, I know um, both Colin and Chris have talked about the need to switch your phones off, but so this, this sounds a bit counterintuitive to that, but it is quite easy to feel isolated when you're revising, especially at the moment, because we're not in touch with each other as we used to be. So whatever method you use to stay in touch with your friends, there are two purposes to it. One is to share a vision. You have, you've probably worked with friends on revision in the past and that works really well. And this year shouldn't be any different. It just might be a different way of doing it. So you might have a WhatsApp group or through Snapchat and you've already got classes set up on Teams. So you could make use of that if you wanted to. It really helps to share ideas with friends studying the same, same courses. You can answer each other's questions and test each other or teach each other on a topic that you're finding challenging. And the other reason for staying in touch is that downtime I've already mentioned. Your friends are there to support you, so don't get bogged down in revision so that you forget to stay in touch and get that emotional backup that only your friends can give. Next slide, please. Last one's about sort of separate zones. So the last thing the, about separate zones is about relaxation and separating those work and, and rest spaces. It's not always easy to have separate physical spaces as in separate rooms, but try to separate them in some way. So if you're working in your bedroom, try and keep your study area organized and focused. Um, it's really hard to work if you're surrounded by mess and you can't find what you need. But equally important is the need to fully relax when you do have your designated times to stop studying. If you can have two different spaces for that, it really helps the brain to switch off from work and onto relaxation. It might mean moving your room around a bit so you can divide those areas effectively, but it will be worth it. This all comes down to the idea of balance. If you're making physical and mental space to relax, it means you should sleep better and this will help you reboot for the next day. So if you're having trouble getting off to sleep and switching off, you can try the Headspace app. It's free for everyone in education and there are a choice of voices uh, to listen to and a range of different relaxation programs which will help you to focus on your breathing and managing any anxiety you might be having. That can be really helpful in exam situations too, that sort of that, um, breathing activities and techniques that you can develop from there. And I've got a top tip for managing exam stress as well. Acknowledge that you'll feel nervous, everybody does. We all feel nervous in stressful situations and that increase in heart rate and the butterflies that you're feeling are your body's response to a stressful situation. And it means adrenaline is kicking in to get you through. So it's actually, it can be a positive thing. In, your, in an exam situation, if you're feeling like that, allow yourself a few minutes at the beginning to, to get those feelings out of your system and to let them run their course, because they will ease, they will, they will step down a level. And then take a few deep breaths and write down a few key things that you need to remember about that particular exam. You can do that at the back of the answer paper and cross it out later. And then, and only then when you've done those things, have a look at the first question and make a start. And if during the exam, you start to feel a bit nervous again, just take a few deep breaths, recalibrate, and then start again. And my last thing to say to you is if it's really important to let someone know if you are feeling a bit overwhelmed with things at the moment, that could be somebody at home, or it could be your tutor, your teacher, or your head of learning, we're all here to support you. So don't forget to reach out to us if you are feeling a bit overwhelmed and stressed with all the revision and exam preparation. So now I'm gonna hand over to Jenny Thompson, Assistant Principal at Worthing for some top revision resources. Hi, good evening. Um, I really hope you're well. I hope that you've um, worked your way through all of these fantastic suggestions and resources that Ross, Chris, Emma and Colin have given you. And what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna give you some, um, I suppose suggestions, ideas on some revision sites. I'm not saying this is the panacea. I'm not suggesting that you might not have some of your own, but what they have, these ones here have been particularly useful when I've been teaching my students and I've found that there have been some really fantastic resources embedded within these four in particular. Please don't stop using yours if they're great, but maybe have a little look inside um, all of these different apps or different websites and they're all free. So, you know, have, have a look at them and see if you like them. So the first one is MindMeister and um, we've mentioned this a couple of times, particularly Chris talked about this with um, resources and revision cards. Now, MindMeister is a mind map 
um, app, which is absolutely fantastic and so easy to use. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Um, Get Revising provides you with absolutely hundreds of thousands of, of act interactive activities. And you might think, crikey, that's far too many. You can really do a lot of filtering with three or four clicks. And it's all example specific and it's all um, course specific. So you'll really find your uh, a real clear navigation through them in two or three clicks. Uh, Seneca is similar to Get Revising. So perhaps have a go at both of them and see which one you prefer. And go Gmo. Um, you can use on your phone and and that's a really nice one it's random tests and it gives you detailed explanations and diagrams and so on so they're the four that i would probably ask you to start with and see if you really uh, like any of them uh, next slide next slide please so my first one i, I spoke about mindmeister and this is a mind map tool and it's really really simple to use on the top left there you can see kind of the task board and what you do is you simply go to a blank page and you click in the middle where the blue icon is there and I've put in there skill acquisition it's a psychology topic and each um, time you want to move on you simply double click what I think is really good about this one is that you can add moving imagery, you can add still imagery and YouTube clips to this as well. And it, you literally go to a little uh, click where you can see in the, perhaps you can see in the taskbar there, and it just says add video or add an image and you go to where you need. What's also really excellent about this is that you can share it with some friends and you can print it out and put it on your wall so you can have a look at it and keep revising. And that again, interspersing and in, interleaving, you can go back and forth to these and they are really simple and they're really glossy and they're really colorful. So that's MindMeister. Um, next slide, please. So my next one is Get Revising. And I've said to you, Seneca is similar to this. Uh, but if you look on the left hand side, I've picked physics. Um, I'm not a physicist at all, but I'm choosing AQA because that's the exam board here. And then it comes up with a whole host of topics, which you'll probably recognize if you do physics. You can click one or you can leave all of them. And then down the bottom, you can see a whole host of resources. So do you want flashcards? Do you want quizzes? Do you want notes? Do you want to have um, revision cards? Or you might have to pick out a whole load of documents so you can go back over a topic and look at them. So on the right hand side, I've given you a, a ready made um, mind map and you've got some YouTube clips. You've also got some um, PowerPoint slides and you can make this however you want. Um, you can upload to it. So just be cautious with what you're looking at just to make sure it is correct. But I find this and my students find this really useful just to supplement some of the work and some of the notes that you've already got. Um, next slide, please. The last slide is something that has been created at college um, by students for students um, with some academic staff involved. Now this one's called a skills for successful study programs and I suppose it really encapsulates everything that we've, we've all been saying this evening. What's really good about this and our principal in particular is really happy is that you can actually learn in the way that suits you best. So there's four different ways you can do so it's something an activity that you can work on. You can watch something, you can listen to a podcast, or if you prefer reading, um, then there's an opportunity for you to do that. So it's a really useful document that you can decide what um, aspect of the learning that you prefer. In each of the programs, of which there are three, there are three different focus embedded within each of them. And again, you will um, click on each of them um, and you'll find this on Moodle. And so the students can go in and have a look at it. So if they want to have a look at something, I'm, I'm not particularly um, well tuned yet or well versed in effective essay writing. So I'm gonna have a look at that, which is program one. Actually, what I want to have a look at now is I'm, I'm struggling when I get to exams time. So I'm gonna have a look at program two on the positive mindset, the bits and bobs that Emma's been going through. And then the last section, program three, is effective revision strategies, of which Chris talked about in terms of active revision. So again, go on to Moodle, have a look at this, skills for successful study, and have a click through this at your leisure, and you can really cherry pick um, and have a look at which are your mode of study that you prefer the most. Um, what has happened now is that we've come to the end of, of the presentation um, in terms of our sharing, and I'm just having a look at our um, Q&A in our chat. We've got a couple of questions in there, but what we'd really like you to do is put a bunch of questions in there that we can help you. I've got a couple of questions already. Um, I thought an ISP was only four hours. 
Um, no, it is six to seven. As, as Colin said, research really does say that four hours really doesn't cut it. Um, but six to seven hours will really work and really stretch you. And if you imagine that each subject is a four hours, um, you add your six hours on, it's 30 hours. So it's a working week. So that's what we like to say at college. You should be working hard as if you were in a full-time job. Um, so that's really important that you put six to seven hours a week into your homework, your independent study packs. Um, so how do we know what exam board we're working on? So um, th maybe I can just hand this one over to one of my colleagues to answer. So Emma, would you like to answer this question? How do we know what exam board we're working on? Yes, of course, thanks Jenny. Um, the best thing to do is to ask your teacher of your particular subject that you want to know. They'll obviously tell you straight away and they'll direct you towards the exam board website where you can find past papers. Lots of exam board websites have, have lots of student friendly resources on there to help you with the revision. So that's the best thing to do is to ask your teacher and they'll be able to tell you. Thanks, Emma. Um, just to remind you, this um, um, presentation will be videoed, so you will be able to go back and have a look at all of the suggestions, recommendations that we've all we've worked through today. Um, we've still got a good few minutes, so I would like for you to, to really perhaps start asking some questions. Um, perhaps I can send this next one over to Chris at Haywards Heath. Will there be extra revision sessions on um, and will staff offer help? Yep, yeah, we'll definitely be able to do that. We'll be doing, um, in the build up to December assessment, staff will be offering extra support sessions, so subject specific support sessions. And what we're also offering students as well is some supervised study time. So if you find it difficult to structure your independent study work, you can basically sign up for some um, supervised study time in the LRC for either two hours or four hours a week, just to help you manage that, that period building up to those, to those December assessments. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I think this one's probably specific to your area, Emma. Um, what is the best way from Saif here to stop procrastination? So perhaps <laughs> you could ask the answer that one for him. Thank you. Um, well, I think the most, most positive thing is that you recognise that that's a trait in yourself. I mean, Chris has just mentioned the supervised study sessions and we've got them here in Worthing as well in the library. So if you know that you are going to struggle to motivate yourself to do that, perhaps ask to book yourself into one of those sessions so you've got that designated time and space to work. Um, setting up a plan and organising your revision time and building in some rewards as well. So if you give yourself sort of a, an hour's space to revise in, maybe 50 minutes on in terms of revision and then 10 minutes off, have a break, eat some favourite food, you know, have a, have a reward at the end of it and structure it so you've got something to look forward to at the end. But breaking it down into chunks, as, as Colin said about that interleaving and, and Chris has also mentioned as well, is really important. So you're not overloading yourself with too much information at once and then you move on to something else. But building in that space, making use of the supervised study sessions at college as well. Lovely, thank you. I'm going to send a question to Colin in a second because it's his area, but um, I've got a question um, here um, in terms of are there specific passwords from Molly um, for Seneca? There's no specific ones. I mean, you do have to have a username and password, but they're entirely yours and it's usually an email address and a password that you recognise. So just go on to it and have a look, put your password in and just have a faff around to see if you really like it. It's a technical term, faffing, by the way. Um, so, Colin, this one's for you. If you could put your questions in the Q&A and not the chat, um, then we'll be able to pick them up, Roger, because I, I might have missed this, but my daughter would like to know how to fit in revision on top of ISPs, which takes a long time to complete. So perhaps, Colin, you could answer that one. So if uh, one, one of the things about the ISPs is that they've got on, ongoing revision built in. Uh, so uh, don't uh, lose sight of the fact that the uh, uh, revision is, is, is ongoing. Um, the important thing is to uh, uh, plan, plan the time. Uh, ISPs are a, a significant body of work, uh, but as you get towards the um, assessment, uh, the key assessment points, and certainly uh, when you get to the external exams at the end of the year, more and more of the work that's in the ISPs will actually focus on, uh, on revision. Um, but it, it is about just trying to look at the time that's available, consider time that's in between lessons at college. So for example, if there's a lesson at uh, 8.30 and then there's a gap in the, in the middle, uh, is an opportunity to uh, uh, work then. 
uh, before the next before the next lesson. So it's been been realistic about what times available and just uh, uh, and just plot plot it so that uh, uh, you can uh, fit it in. But yeah, re revision revision should be done alongside and with the ISPs because the, so much of the ISPs uh, are trying to develop uh, revision and revision skills. Thanks, Colin. I'm just going to send one over to you in a minute, Chris, but just a couple of um, questions on here. What are the four revision sites called again? Leslie, I'll, you'll have a copy of this um, PowerPoint afterwards, but they're called Seneca, Get Revising, um, Mind Meister, and Gojimo. Um, but you'll get all of those again shortly. Um, yep, Keeley, they are all free. Um, so I've made sure that they're all free for you. Um, Chris, you've got a question here. Um, they've got a new law teacher in um, Haywards Heath. Oops, that's just popped up. Um, will there be some resources that will help um, the anonymous attendee catch up, please? Yeah, definitely. Um, so our new law teacher started this week. So obviously the main focus really is in catching up in terms of your studies from where you were before half term. Um, all resources that uh, will be available on Teams. So as we're going through the course, do keep an eye out for that. And there'll also be links to those resources on your student study plan as well. Um, we are looking at doing some extra catch up sessions as well. Um, so we'll let you know when those are going to be organised uh, later in the term. OK, thank you. Um, anonymous attendee again. Um, I've sent, I don't know whether Ross, you're still there. Um, the question is, um, really pertinent to you. How do parents keep up to date with their child's progress and will they be contacted if there are any worries or concerns? Yeah, thanks Jenny. So <clears throat> there we have got a portal for parents which um, hopefully you've all become aware of um, now. So that there's, it's called the Parent Portal and you can access it through the college website and that will give you access to some basic information about student progress such as um, attendance data but also the main tracking grades. We're also working at the moment to try and integrate also the, the grade book so that you can see um, grades for students' individual kind of 11 assignments during the year. So that's one way in which you can do it. But um, the other way, of course, is, is through teachers and, and tutors. And, and it is the job of teachers and tutors to contact parents if they've got concerns and worries. And, and you know, if there is an issue, then you, you can expect the tutor or the teacher to get in touch but there's nothing to stop you as well if you'd like to just dropping an email to the college if you don't know the individual email address of the teacher then just use the info at address info at worthing.ac.uk drop the college an email we'd be happy to get back to you okay thank you i've got a question from kp i'm hoping this is a parent and not a student um where are the isps and what are they um isps are independent study packs they are homework packs and they are packs that um, have six to seven hours worth of um, resources in them. There's five or six different types of resources embedded into each weekly study pack. And they can be found on Moodle. And what will happen is that the student will be uh, accesses those via the VLE portal and they can show you where they are. You won't have an independent study pack for an applied general course, which has coursework. These are exam-based units if you're doing BTEC or CAMTEC or they're A-levels. Um, so if you're doing, for instance, a coursework unit in sport, you might not have one of these. So that's why it might seem a little bit strange, but please ask your son or daughter if they are doing an exam, um, what their ISP looks like, because they definitely should be getting lots of them. Um, my next question perhaps goes to Emma. Um, how does supervised study work and where should I book in? Okay, um, there is a timetable of super, supervised study. I haven't got it to hand, so I can't tell you exactly when the sessions are. Um, you can either ask your teacher about it or the best way is probably to speak to your tutor and they will be able to book you in. So the sessions are in the library, they run throughout the week and then you can book yourself into the one that fits around your timetable. Thank you. And, and Chris, um, this one's for you. How can I make good flashcards and what should I write on them? Um, I think it's best in terms of using flashcards, really good for like remembering keywords, key terminology. Um, obviously, when you're using flashcards, you don't put too much text on, on them. It's also quite good to use flashcards with other people. So if you're doing some revision with a with friend, obviously testing yourself, using those flashcards with the answers for key terminology is a really good way of using them effectively. 
Thank you. And Ross, perhaps you could answer this one. How many hours of revision should they do a day and how much is too much? And the third part, that's quite a long question. How much time should I dedicate to other activities? So how much revision, how much is too much and what should I give over to other activities? Um, I think what I would say to that is that during the course of the year, we, we um, would ask students to do a full working week as, as Emma said earlier. So, you know, um, if you're doing an average of seven hours a day, um, which kind of combines your class time with your independent study, then, then over five days in the week, that, that adds up to about 35 hours a week, doesn't it? So you might do that across the whole, the whole seven day week. You might work at the weekends um, as well as during the week, but you should be aiming, I think, for the majority of the year, at delivering a sort of the equivalent of a full working week. So you might have 12 hours in the classroom. So that would mean you should be doing something like um, 25 hours a week of independent study beyond that. I think as we get closer to the exams, you, are, you, would, you should be starting to build that up. And so in the last few weeks, it's normal, I think, to increase the tempo, increase the pace, work a bit more intensively and, and build that up. So um, my recommendation would be in the spring term, you're doing um, a, wor a working day of seven or eight hours a day. And then perhaps in the last few days and weeks, build that up a bit more um, to get yourself completely ready. Thanks, Ross. Um, Tina, if you could just add a bit more detail to your question, why is work distributed between Moodle and Teams? And um, I could probably answer your question. Um, but Colin, do you want to answer this one from George? What happens if someone is unable to attend an exam due to COVID or, or perhaps even or just being unwell as well? Yeah, yeah, George, it doesn't really matter whether it's COVID or uh, uh, any other Ill illness. Obviously, at times, uh, uh, students can't make it in for exams, and that's just, uh, uh, it's unfortunate, but it is one of the things that we have to de deal with. Uh, so, you know, if someone is um, uh, ill, you know, it'd be, uh, uh, the, the positive thing would be to follow the absence policy and just co and call the college so that we are aware that uh, um, you're not going to be able to make it in. Uh, and then staff will look to uh, reschedule the exam at an, at an appropriate time, um, hopefully before in this case, the Christmas uh, uh, Christmas break, but depending on what type of illness is, uh, it might be that uh, it's something that uh, uh, has to be done after the uh, uh, break when we come, come back in January. But uh, certainly there'll be an opportunity for you to uh, uh, um, do it. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna send another one back to Ross in a second about the parent portal. But Leon, you asked a question about flashcards and should I mix it up with other studying techniques? Absolutely. You should never choose just one technique um, to, to develop revision strategies and, and muscle memory um, because it, it's kind of, you just learn the same thing. You need to be doing different things. You need to be using um, exam cards. You need to be using um, mark books. You need to be reading um, materials. You need to be doing a, a, a range of different activities. So flashcards gives you the basics um, and they will be they will consolidate what you need to know, but they won't help you know everything. So you definitely need to know more. Um, so Ross, I've never heard of the parent portal um, and they can't find it on the website. It's an anonymous person here. Please, could you email parents with the details of how to access it? Yeah, I think what I've done here is I've failed to take into account we're talking to Worthing and Hose Heath parents. And so um, I do apologize. The good news is that um, the parent portal is something which the, the Chichester College group is planning to roll out across the whole group. At the moment, it's just something which Worthing College does. We've had it for a few years, but Chichester College group, they like it and they want to make this available to um, the whole group, but it, it won't probably be this academic year. I think the plan is for it to be available for the whole group from next academic year. Hey, Ross, can I just chip in there about um, how we are communicating that to parents at Haywards Heath? So, um, parents will be sent an email in January after the December assessments, which will provide a summary of how students are progressing. So that will be communicated to all parents via email in, in uh, the new year. Thank you, Chris. Um, just a quick question for an anonymous attendee. What do we do if a study session clashes with another lesson? Just chat to your teacher. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can support you. Um, we can put you in another class so you can come in and, and get to grips with that. Or the teacher can give you some materials or, or they could just speak to you on a one-to-one. -one. So we never let you flounder. We never let you struggle. As long as you let us know 
that you need to a little bit of advice and support, then we will do our very, very best to help you. Um, just having another quick whiz down here to see if we've got um, any other questions. I think, I think we've answered this, but Emma, you might just want to consolidate it again. Have you got any advice on how to balance revision around work and hobbies, et cetera? Okay, um, thanks Keely for that question. I think the best way really is to set yourself up a timetable, the, the ones that were demonstrated on the screen earlier, or you can create your own, and then you can really plot out where your lessons are, what work commitments you've got, and then schedule in some time for relaxation as well as your, your revision. So I think that's probably the, the most important way of doing it, because then you can see how the week pans out and make sure that you've, you've got space for everything that you're planning to do. Um, Jenny, can I just pick up Tina's question as well about the Moodle and Teams aspect, because I, I think I probably get what she means. Moodle is our virtual learning environment, and obviously that's where we've got the bulk of our resources for students. But because we've had to move over to some remote delivery via Teams, you'll find that teachers are also putting resources on there for lessons. So Moodle is the main place where everything is stored, but Teams is being used for that, that virtual delivery. And obviously, the lesson resources are required in there so students can access them as the lesson's happening. So that, that's why it's distribu distributed between the two sections. Thank you. And um, I don't know whether you know the answer to this one, Colin, but um, Victoria has asked, can we create our own study groups on Teams? Um, the answer is I don't don't quite know whether or not uh, uh, you can actually take uh, a number of uh, students from that group and create your own group. Um, but the idea of actually creating your your own own group in another way is really important. So or, and re really useful. So whether you can do it on Teams, I don't quite know. Uh, I think that might be something that uh, your um, staff would be able to answer because they're more familiar with Teams using it day in, day out to deliver uh, remotely. But just the idea of, of, get, of making revision groups, whether that's through uh, WhatsApp uh, or any other uh, type of uh, um, social media, or whether you create your own Teams group, all, all of that is really uh, useful and a productive way of uh, share, sharing ideas and, and working together. So yeah, go ahead and do it. Whether you can do it through Teams, have a chat with your um, teachers. I don't know whether anybody on here knows the answer to that. Um, can yeah, students? I mean, yep. Sorry, Jenny. Yeah, you could you you could set up your own team. So, with friends, you could use that as a as a as a resource to share ideas and share and, and share resources. Or um, your teacher might be able to set up a channel within your team uh, for revision purposes. So that could either involve the whole group or a small a small group of people. Um, so yeah, it's possible that it, it can be done by teams I, either through. The teams are being used already for remote learning or it could be a team that you set up yourself with your friends thank you and not, not to mention zoom zoom's free uh, uh, it's 45 minutes so it's, it's a really useful um time to spend because we recommend about 50 minutes where you're working constantly so download zoom and you can invite your friends and your pals to that as well um i'm just going to give um a kind of and they open the floor for the last couple of minutes to anybody that wants to answer any questions so um if you want to unmute if there's anything that perhaps i've missed or you want to add to um emma is there anything for you i think i've picked up on everything i wanted to answer i know somebody's questioned um they've just checked gojimo and they they couldn't find it available so obviously that's that's something for us to look into yeah i looked only the other day and i could definitely get onto it so i'll have another look Colin, is there anything that you want to pick up? Yeah, there's a question here about, uh, uh, I find it hard to have the motivation to, to revise. What's the best way to set uh, time, time aside? Um, yeah, I think, it, uh, you know, you've got, you've got an aim and you've got a goal. You're doing a qualification that requires uh, um, input. So there is a, uh, a commitment to it, um, but plan, plan, plan your time. Uh, because uh, uh, it's likely that when you when you do that, you'll see that the yeah I can I can find space here to uh, to revise adequately. Therefore, you feel positive about doing it. Um, some of the distractions that have been talked about, phones, um, you know, just uh, uh, remove those. You can you could ask uh, uh, someone in your family to uh, uh, take take your phone um so that uh, uh it's literally can't be something that you can uh, you can grab so try and create an environment and try and create situations where you've got time and space uh 
uh, to be able to uh, um, get uh, get get stuck into it. And and whilst whilst you're doing doing that, try different ways of revising um, because not every way is perfect for you. And obviously, if you find the one that uh, works well, you will be uh, uh, more more motivated to uh, to keep going. So don't uh, uh, get stuck at the first hurdle when it comes to revision. It, uh, you do need to keep going with it. Thank you. Ross, is there anything you want to pick up or just consolidate? I would just add that um, another way to find out the exam board for your courses is to go onto the college website. That information is there. If you find the A to Z of courses and then just choose your course, one of the first um, lines of the, the document will tell you the exam board for your courses. Okay. And um, Chris, do you want to wrap up with anything? Yeah, just to pick up a question about Moodle, someone asked if Moodle is available at Haywards Heath. Uh, we're just using Teams for everything at Haywards Heath, so all, all the resources you acquire for your course will be available um, on Microsoft Teams. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that concludes um, all of the Q&A. If we have missed anything out, um, then we will be able to have a look at it and we will um, answer any questions. Again, the um, recording will be emailed to you um, in due course over the next day or so. Um, but please, if you, are, if you do have any questions, please email your teacher. You can email any one of us on the screen um, and we will therefore give you help. But again, please don't struggle. We're here to help you. Plan. Planning is a really effective way to reduce stress. And if you need any more advice and guidance, just holler. So it's been lovely chatting to you. I'm, uh, although I can't see any of you, I'm delighted to have you um, here today. And really good luck with the exams coming up um, and over the next few months with your revision. Thank you very much and good night.